So in today's video, I am going to discuss what is the research proposal and what are the basic things to keep in mind when you are writing a research proposal. So essentially a research proposal is a document where you present the design of a research program. And research proposals are important because they are required in many scenarios. One of the scenarios is that you are seeking grant from a body or institution and this grant requires you to submit a research proposal. The second situation could be a well-known fellowship or scholarship and this scholarship or fellowship would give you funds to stay at a particular university or institution and also travel grants and this fellowship requires you to submit a research proposal. A third scenario could be that your own university requires you to write a research proposal for doing a PhD or for getting into a postdoctoral program. So you will see that most of these postdoctoral programs, most of the fellowships, things such as summer visits and so on, they all require you to submit a proposal. And the proposal length, size and detail depends on the extent of the work involved, the level of funding involved and so on. So why is the proposal so important? The proposal is very important because this is how you get money to do your work or you get permission to do your work. And in many cases, because money is a scarce resource, you are not going to get these grants if people feel that your work is not worth doing. So again, this is a situation which happens because there is a relative scarcity of funds and so the funds have to be given to the problems which are perceived to be the most important by the experts in the field. So now how do you go about designing a research proposal? So I would say that you first begin with a big picture view of the problem, then you drill down and then you let this whole process marinate for some time and then you finally sit down and write this research proposal. For example, a big picture view of a problem could be that vibration is an important problem. Then if you are in a specific field, you could drill down further and you could say that you want to reduce vibration in rotor blades using piezoceramic materials. So this particular outcome you may have obtained after doing a thorough literature survey in the field and finding out the gaps in the literature. Now you need to think about all the different aspects which are required to prove this particular concept. So you may need to do modeling, you may need to do experiments, you may need to do some prototype development and so on. Now all these things would require you to buy equipment, you may need computers, you may need to buy consumables such as piezoceramic materials. You would need certain machines and equipment. And all these things are essentially the things which you need to put in your proposals to ask for money. You may also need to take a couple of research students to do this problem. And you may need money for traveling to conferences registration fees of conferences and so on. So all these are essentially put into the research proposal. So you can see that this whole process of designing this research problem is a very important problem and this is an important part of the research process. Now very frequently graduate students are shielded from this process because they often go to a university and the professor may have obtained a grant from a research institution by writing a proposal. And then the student is given this particular proposal and he or she starts working on his PhD or master's problem or postdoc problem as the case may be. But there are different universities where students actually have to write a research proposal to do a PhD or a postdoc. And in these cases, the students may spend a lot of time figuring out what exactly is a good problem to do. And then they need to write this research proposal to even get permission from the university to continue further on this topic in the department. 
So whatever the scenario may be, in all cases, the outcome is the same and your proposal essentially has to go through a 1-0 decision or a binary decision that it may get through or it may get rejected. So that is why it's very important to put a lot of time on the proposal problem. Now, one of the things to do is to read the proposal guideline very carefully. So most proposals will have a page limit. And again, proposals which are relatively small in terms of the timeline have a lower page limit. So for example, if you are applying to summer fellowships or postdoctoral positions for a year, then the proposal size may be three to five pages in single spaced 12 point fonts. If you are applying to a major two, three year grant, then it may be 15 pages long. So again, these particular requirements will be specified by the body which is giving funding and which is soliciting the proposal. So once you have prepared this particular document, you need to get some signatures. You need to write out the entire budget, the amount of money you need. And then once this document is complete, you essentially submit this on the web page. So now most proposals have a document which solicits them. And this document is known as a request for proposal, sometime also known as RFP. Now, essentially, we can classify these requests into two broad types. One is basic research and second is program based proposals. So in basic research, the proposals are solicited on a very broad theme. So it could be solicited on something such as mathematics or material science or chemistry. And essentially here the writer of the proposal is expected to write a proposal on some cutting edge theme in this particular area and then solicit funding for these works. Now very frequently these kind of basic research proposals come from bodies which do pure sciences and the proposals will essentially ask you to lay out as to what is the novelty of your work purely in the sense of scientific advancement of knowledge. Now the second type of proposals are the program based proposals and here this is typically some body which wants to apply this work. So these are technology type proposals. And for example, let's say we take an important problem such as vibration reduction in structures. Now a certain body may solicit proposals which look at vibration reductions in structures using smart materials. And this proposal would then get a response from various people who would use different type of smart materials, different active and passive control methods. They would look at different structures such as beams, plates, flight vehicles, bridges and so on. And then this body would produce these particular proposals and give out grants to many of them. Now typically as far as the program based proposals are concerned, they have a lot of practical component. So again, these are typically funded by bodies from medicine, from defense, transportation and so on. Now how is a proposal perused? So I would say that there are a few things people look at. The first thing people look at is whether the proposal contains research which can be completed in the given amount of task. So this is something which is very important to keep in mind that whatever you are projecting as the work to be done should be something which can be completed in the six months or three years timeline you have asked for. Because this is something which people can figure out very quickly. The next thing people look at is what are the different methods you have proposed for the research and whether these methods are sufficiently novel and whether they will actually be useful in terms of solving this problem. So again, remember that the proposals are reviewed by experts in the field and so these people are quite cognizant about the different aspects of the field and they can make a judgment here. The next thing they look at are the credentials of the people writing the proposals. And this is very important because if you are writing a proposal on a subject such as vibration reduction using smart structure, 
then you should be a person who works in the broad area of structures or structural mechanics. If you are a person working in computer science or in biology or in fluid mechanics, then it's not appropriate for you to write this proposal and so it will probably be rejected right at this stage because they are going to go through your basic bio data and CV and see your past publications to know what is your expertise. The next thing to see is what are the outputs which you have promised and whether these can actually be delivered. So again here these may be in terms of just publications or a technical report or it could be more quantitative such as a computer program or a prototype of a flight vehicle or an experimental demonstration of something. So again these are something which are very important and this is something which people are very interested in. And these are some of the concepts people look at and then they decide whether this particular proposal can be done. So how do you go about soliciting or writing proposals? So regarding soliciting proposals, I would say that various bodies solicit proposals based on some high level requirement which has been created by the top government level bodies or the foundations which are funding the particular fellowship. So again, these may be on some broad themes such as climate change or safety or machine learning or healthcare. And these are essentially the broad themes which are decided at the top level in the country or the world. And then they percolate down to various tasks which need to be done to further development in these fields. So you need to match your proposal very much to what is being solicited. So if a proposal is there for climate change, then there are a series of ways you can address this problem. You can go from it using the solar panel approach, using the wind turbine approach, using biofuels and all these different situations. So depending on your field, you need to tailor the proposal to meet the particular guideline. Now, how do you go about writing a proposal? So I would say the first thing you do is you create a skeleton or draft and then you work further with that. So where can you find more information? So one of the sources is the National Science Foundation Grant Proposal Guide. So you can find more information at nsf.gov. Now, here they suggest certain things which they typically look at when they produce a proposal. One is that as far as the proposed work is concerned, what is the aim of this proposed work and what are going to be the scientific new discoveries or advancements which are going to come out of this work. The next important thing is to look at the suitability of the methods which you have proposed. So this is very important. The next are the qualifications of the various people who are proposing this project as well as the institution where these people are working because it's important to make sure that this institution has the requisite infrastructure to support this research and hopefully has taken part in some of these research grants in the past. So it's always difficult for an institution which is just entering a research field to suddenly start getting a lot of grants. One more issue is that the fund should lead to some development of the infrastructure in the institution concerned and in the state or country in general. And finally, the level of funding requested. And this is very important because again, these bodies typically have a limited amount of funding and that's all the money they can give you. Now, generally it is recommended that the proposal should be prepared with great care. And just like when you write a journal paper, it is written with great care. It is reviewed many times to make sure there are no typos or mistake and all the things are very well written out. The proposals must be at the same level of clarity. So what is the basic outcome or a basic uh, outline of a proposal? So I will give you the basic outline here. So the first thing you have is a project summary that comes after the title. Then you may have a table of contents, then a project description, reference list, biodata of the people doing the problem, budget, 
what are the proposals you are currently doing right now so this helps people know how much time you have at your disposal and finally the facilities equipment and resources which are there in your lab at this point so now if you look at this outline we will go in detail in one aspect which is the project description so in the project description you need to give first thing statement of the problem and its importance so this is a very important part of the project description and here i would say that typically you need to give it at a broad level in terms of money health survival some of the major issues which affect mankind or life forms in general as to why exactly you are going to do this work so for example if you are working on vibration reduction it has impact on health aspects it has impact on money aspects because it prevents fatigue life in the different vehicles and also it prevents damage and catastrophic crashes now once you have given the statement of the problem in great detail and its importance then you go into introduction and background and here you give literature survey preliminary data and results models novelty and justification then you go into the research plan and this is where you present your research design the aims of your project the hypothesis and methods used the different simulations and the analysis you are going to do expected results and timeline and then finally references so this is the basic outline of a typical proposal and this is more or less constant across most of the situations so again as you can see in this particular proposal theory it is somewhat similar to writing a journal paper but it's also quite different because a journal paper presents a completed research problem whereas a proposal is presenting a design of a research problem for the future and therefore actually a proposal should not give too much information in terms of results it should not be too complicated and so on it should make the people feel that this is an important problem that the person has figured out the path to solve this problem in terms of methods analysis and experiment and when this person is going to do this problem the outcome of this problem is going to be very great so again at this point you typically do not have and should not have end results of the project because if the end results of the project are there then the research has been done so you must have some very preliminary results or concepts which let the people know that there is something great going to come at the end of this work and the research design should be as thorough as possible because people like to see that you have thought through the problem and actually many people like to read proposals because this is in a nutshell where they can figure out all that you are going to do about a certain topic and so there is a huge amount of information which is contained in those 5 to 15 pages in terms of research planning which is of great value to any professional or researcher in the field so again these are some of my basic thoughts today about how to write a research proposal and stay tuned to my videos for more talks on these topics thank you very much